Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Actually, it's, it's Thursday. Thursday, Thursday night pro scrims. I am John Squirrelhead Bobble. Tonight, I'm joined by Matt Chickenhead Morello. And Matt, we have a sick matchup tonight. Yeah, you know, we got a great matchup tonight. We got Envy against TK. Two of the best teams we have. Not only that, we know that Envious, they recently made a roster change. They lost JCap. Now they are playing with Merc. And not only do they have a new teammate, they're playing with some different roles. And on the other side for Team Caliber, Gunjar, unfortunately, he's unable to play at Gfinity. So they're going to be using Stainville tonight to practice for that upcoming event. Yeah, and it's always fun to see Stain play against Envy. Longtime Envy member now with well, TK for Gfinity. And also, it's going to be interesting to see Merck's new role on Envy. He's, I think he's running a sub now. Yeah, he's been running a sub. You know, when he first joined, he was doing some of the anchor work. But it looks like him and Proofy, they're going to switch it up a bit. So I like that Envy, they're experimenting with new things. Because we know that they have been struggling in recent times, most notably in hard points. So it's nice that they are addressing the issue. What do you think of Merck, you know, potentially moving to his submachine gun role? No, I think it could work out for... Envy, you know, a lot of teams are running three subs, one AR, and you really don't want to take that AR out of Proofy's hands. You want to keep him letting him do what he does with the AR because he's so good. And All I right, think Merck's so a good enough player to transition over to running a sub. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. But let's take a look at the keys to success for both of these teams tonight. All right, so we have Team Envious, and the number one thing there is knowing their roles. And that's kind of what we were talking about a bit earlier. You know, in the past, you know, you had Proofy and JCAP. Both can anchor, both can kind of be aggressive with their with their assault rifles, but, you know, it's kind of like you need set roles. You know, you can't, you know, keep switching things up or have two people play the same exact role. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, with uh, Proofy and Jcap, they were, there was just too much roaming and nobody really okay. got to the anchor position and really held that down. So I think with the way they're going to have this team set up with, you know, Merc running a sub and Proofy strictly anchoring, uh, that'll work out better. And it'll also be interesting to see how their teamwork and communication is. You know, Merc's new player to the team. He's played with some of his, these other players before, but it'll be interesting to see how they mesh together. Also, with their communication, I mean, Rambo, he's usually the in-game leader. This time around, you mainly see Karma kind of calling the shots, you know, telling them where to go, telling them where to set up and where to be around the map. So it's kind of interesting to see Rambo, he's no longer in that position, but his communication, it's still one of the best in the game. Yeah, and I mean, you know, uh, with TK also, talking about TK a little bit going into this game, uh, they're really going to need to win their respawn game modes. They're, gonna, they're extremely good on search, probably the best search team in the league, yeah. you know. Them and Unite are Them top and two Unite, right now. Yeah. And, you know, they're really just going to need to focus on their respawn game modes. All right, so we've talked about the teams. Let's go into the players to watch for tonight. So for NBS, of course, we got the new guy. It's going to be Merc, and as we said, a new role. So how is he going to do with the submachine gun as opposed to with an assault rifle in his hands? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to play this new role, you know, running a submachine gun. And it'll also, it'll also play into the chemistry with the team because it'll be interesting to see how he works with the other subs because subs, they really work. That you're really tied to the other subs almost like on an invisible string i would say so it'll be th that'll be a true test of how far their teamwork is this early and for team caliber we have neslo and the one thing i'm looking at there it's going to be their ctf play if you look at all the guys for team caliber when they have gunjar in the lineup they don't really have kind of that main slayer they all just kind of try to do their own thing and they focus on flags i'm looking for neslo to step up there in terms of the slaying department yeah neslo is really going to have to step up in terms of slaying you know like you said there's no real like just Slayer who's going to consistently go off and give you tons of kills. They're, they're a well-balanced team, but every team needs a Slayer on those hard points and CTFs. So it'll be interesting if he's the one who will step up for his team. More importantly, on a map like Slums Capture Flag, you need someone, you know, for a complexity. It's Clayster just locking down that blue side of the map, you know. Usually we see Gunjar doing it. We'll see if Stainville steps it up tonight in terms of that map control, power position control for Caliber. Yeah, Stainville's a little bit uh, different type of player than Gunjar. You know, Gunjar is a little more passive, more more of a traditional anger. I would say Stainville falls in between passive and aggressive. I say aggressive, you kind of have like BL Fire, who's extremely aggressive, and Gunjar, who's more passive. So he works in the middle of those two. Also, under Team Caliber, we had who's the in-game leader now because we know Stainville he loves to you know be in control of his team but that's why Nestle was brought onto onto Team Calvert to be the in-game leader to be the shot caller for this team so I'm really interested to see who's going to take over for this squad. Yeah, that's extremely interesting. You know, it's a, it's a difficult situation with Stainville being the new guy on the team and really kind of just a replacement for Gunjar. So it'll be interesting if they give him more of a, a vocal role or he kind of just plays the part and just 
works with what Nezla says. Well, off the start, it looks like Rambo's got the hot hand already on a three kill spree. He's around one kill away from acquiring his score streaks, and he's gonna find the kill here on the Sharp as he puts in some initial shots, but here comes Sharp. Oh, Sharp is unable to turn around there. So Rambo does earn himself the Hellstorm missile, so good stuff coming from him. As there you go, he's currently on a four kill trap. I thought we were driving from my screen, but we're actually taking it from Mr. X's screen. Yeah, I believe the audio wasn't working from uh, your screen. But you know, this is such an interesting class from Rambo. You don't see a lot of objective players run extreme conditioning. And it's, I, I believe he also runs trophy systems at the start. So it's an odd class you don't see from a lot of objective players, but he makes it work to for him. The one thing I do not like is the trophy systems, yeah. of course. I mean, you could get away with running extreme conditioning from time to time, but this is normally, like, this is the normal perk setup you'll see with these team with uh, the objective players. You'll see lightweight, flag jacket, toughness, but usually you see dexterity instead of extreme conditioning. But Rambo, he has some score streaks to work with, and so does Sharp from Team Calibre. Yeah, you know, Sharp's going to pick up all his streaks and a big kill there, you know, get, holding down that hard point. Like you were saying, I think the standard class for a sub would probably be lightweight, with toughness, obviously, dexterity, tack mask, and then uh, whatever sub of your choice, and then probably uh, long barrel, quick draw. I think dexterity is definitely necessary, deployed. especially as an objective person in those close-up gun battles. I feel like we should elaborate on that a bit more. So you see the class Nezla is using? When you have flak jacket on, that indicates that you want to be more inside the hard point. We're doing the objective part. When you see a submachine gun solely running lightweight, that means that they're not too worried about grenades because they're generally not going to be inside the hard point. They're going to be roaming around, picking up the kills outside. So you see the perk selection definitely affects what role you type you kind of play. Yeah, I think if you're going to be a sub and play more outside of the hard point, I think you're definitely going to want tack mask. That if you're running around, there's there's not a good chance you're going to get really tagged with grenades. So I think. Uh, tack mask is definitely what you would want, but also uh, hardwire too. We can talk about that yeah. because tons of teams are switching over to EMPs now, so it's definitely important to have hardwire classes. I think mainly the shot color for the team. So whoever's the in-game leader, he's the guy running hardwired because he needs that information constantly from the minimap. Where is his teammates located? What's open around the map? So you're gonna see, especially it looks like Stainville was running that for Team Caliber. So it looks like Stainville would be the guy stepping up in terms of callouts. Yeah, absolutely. And now you see from Proofy, we're seeing we're seeing very interesting class uh, setups tonight. You know, we're seeing Faster. we're seeing a fast hands trophy system class, and you know. That, that would put it at three trophy systems they have as a team. If you're going to have three trophy systems as a team, I really don't, I really think you're wasting just classes. I generally honest. don't like it on just the submachine gun player, but if you're an assault rifle guy, yeah. Because if you're a sub guy, whenever you try to throw out those trophy systems, yeah. it's just slowing you down. When you're a sub, you just want to be constantly pushing up in the action. But if you have to slow down your pace just to get those trophy systems out, I feel like it kind of takes away some of your usefulness around the map. Absolutely. And, you know, it also, if you're using, let's say they have three trophies at the mm -hmm. minimum, right? You're also, you're hindering the amount of nades and tacticals you throw, which is a huge part of this game, you know? Grenades and tacticals, I mean, if they would have had stuns right here to push down into this hard point, Theory doesn't have tack mask on. That's pretty much a free kill. Not only that, if the other team recognizes, hey, these guys are very heavy in their trophy systems class, take away your grenades, put on a more perk heavy class setup, and, you know, just kind of be a one man army there. Oh, absolutely. You have to pay attention to the classes the other teams are using because there are so many times where I see people run. They'll run something like tack mask the whole game. And the other team's not throwing yeah, stuns. Don't have any stuns, no so, flashes. Yeah, so you're not, so you're not really gaining any type of advantage from the class you have. The class setups are extremely important in this game. All right, let's hop into the action here. I want to go on board with the new guy from Team Envious. It's going to be Merc, and take a look at this submachine gun. He's got a double trophy system class, but. It looks like he's using lightweight flak jack along with dexterity, so that tells me he wants to be inside the hard point helping out Rambo. Yeah, but it, 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 it's it's kind of counterintuitive to be honest, Revan, because you, now you have five trophy systems. This is great if you can get control of the hill and set up, but if you can't break it using the easy using stuns and grenades, it's extremely hard to get in there and hold that time. So. I think I think Envy can tinker a little bit with some of their classes. I feel like that's a great kind of rotation class. If you're rotating early, you get to the hard point first. Sure, solidify your yeah, position absolutely. with those trophy systems. But when you're in transition from hard point to hard point and you're trying to break it, I don't really see how these two trophy systems are going to help you out that much. No, I would much rather see you know Maybe smokes some smoke, or yeah. something like that. And also because Proofy has tr trophies and he has fast hands too. I mean, he can really throw the trophies out for the subs and then go back to just slaying with his AR. And 
currently in the game, you see that Team MGS, they are trailing by around 70 points total on the scoreboard, but you see Proofy, he's taken over as the anchor player, and I want to take a look at our scoreboard real quick. He's on top, 20 and 14, also has some defense to his name, and we see that from Clayce, you know, when his teammates get taken out inside the hard point, Clayce will actually rotate there, pick up the time, and he can do some slang in there as well. Oh, absolutely, I mean, that's a huge part of the game, and I mean, if Proofy actually can pick up these streaks right now, that would be huge in trying to come bird. back okay. Team MGS. And well, he just right, makes Nezzo look silly right there. Fast hands helping out. <laughs> Proofy gets fully streaked out. Proofy oh, acquires man. the war machine. So this is what Envy needs to utilize here. Their score streaks. If they use these perfectly, they could climb the back into this game. Play. And here you go. Proofy's going to throw out the trophy the systems inside the kitchen. He's got a war machine to defend himself. You're looking at the minimap. Team Crabber, they're going to be coming from the back door and Proof, he's ready for them. Yeah, you know, a TK has to be extremely be careful right here because if they give up a lot of time sword. here. It's going to be easy for Envy to break this next one if Proofy saves onto this War Machine. So, you know, they can't, oh they have God. to be careful. He's on a roll right now, man. Proofy they, is so good. Yeah, he is so good with that AR, dude. They have to be careful, though, because they can't feed Envy more streaks because they'll climb back even faster. But at the same time, you can't give up this time. And then Proofy gets taken out inside the hardpoint. It's going to be Rambo taking over. Finds two there, taking out Theory and Sharp. But Nezo will lead the way. But take a look at your picture in picture at one moment there. Three players for Team MBS were inside the hard point. I love what they're trying to do here, switching things up. You know, in the past, they've been more focused on getting those roaming kills, but now having three guys inside the hard point at one time, that's always it. Their focus is more on inside the hard point. Control that before you push out. Right, a lot of teams, they do it almost backwards where they focus so much time on the spawns that they, they never get the hill. They, you win by getting the hill. It's great to have the spawns. You need the time, though. Let's hop on board with Stainbo, though. He's going to be the fill-in for Team Cobby. We'll also be playing for them at Infinity, but he got taken out. Now it's going to be up to Nezzo trying to break, and you know, now Envy, they have control, so it's only fair we go back on board with them. And here comes Rambo. Now he's doing some roaming slang. Does get taken out there as it's going to be proof inside the hard point. And it looks like he's going to find nobody to kill as all of Team Cabra, they're going to be coming down the middle. But they're getting not the worst spawn in the world. They're spawning right next to the Ark building. But take a look at the scoreboard, Mr. X. It's only a 12-point game. Yeah, you know, Envy, Envy is making a huge comeback right now. Proof he's about to overlap his streaks, and I jinx him. But, you know... This is a great play from Team Envious, and you notice they already have one guy on rotation really early. I mean, if you give the rest of this time up to Team Cobbler, you're only going to be down by around 30 points. That's half a Absolutely. hard point. And take a look at the minimap. They're going to invest this time into a setup near the basketball hard point, and this is definitely a controllable hard point. If you get your ideal setup, you get a lot of time on this one, and I'm going to be looking at Proofy to get his team to spawn here. Yeah, you know, they're just going to play three guys in this hill, which is a smart play right now because you know TK doesn't have streaks. And I don't know how much I like that you said that light. I like it, actually. You do? Using it for more of a defensive purpose. That's all for dead for Team Cobbler. So you see them spawning quite far out. That guarantees Envy at least 15 seconds here inside the hard point. Plus, if they're able to pick up kills off the respawn, it's going to guarantee them more time. In fact, here you go. He's going to call him the Hellstorm. So sees all four members coming from up top for Team Cobbler. We'll take out one inside the hard point. But Team Envy, they've just about tied this game up. Yeah, you know, I probably would have liked to see the Hellstorm used originally Hellstorm for there. Lightning. And then I would have liked to see him save that Lightning for this last mm -hmm. hill. Because this last hill, if they don't rotate, and they're only going to, I believe, TK will probably have one of their guys switch over to an AR to run two ARs in this last hill. If Envy doesn't adjust their classes, they're never going to get control. Of you got to watch out for Sharper as well. He's starting to heat up close to getting his Hellstorm missile. And you were just talking about the lightning strike for the next R point. So effective with clearing out the enemy team there. So Sharp, he is the guy to look out for. But it's going to be Nezzle inside the action here. R point initially controlled by Team Envious. Now we can hop back on board. Sharp does find Karma here, unable to clean up the kill though. And Sharp. It's such a dilemma because you want these score streaks, you want to use these score streaks to, you know, win the game, but you can't give up time as well. Yeah, you know, if you would have gotten those streaks, that would have been huge. And uh, TK really has to watch themselves. They were giving up tons of time, but it looks like Stain coming out with two huge and kills. And, yeah, and there you go. I mean, that's that's why ARs control the middle because it's so hard to push through that, the pillar area and the pool stairs. And, really get in there clean if the guys are using assault rifle. The stain is going off in the hill right now, dude. Take a look at our final stats. Proofy, 38 kills, 25 deaths. Some amazing slaying being done by him, but in the end, Team Caliber will take the game 250 to 204, but that was still a solid hard point game by Envy. Yeah, you know, that was that was some of the better uh, respawn game mode play I've actually seen out of TK, too. So. I think Envy kind of has the the opposite of dilemma as Optic had. Optic didn't have enough slang. Envy had too much slang. And right now, I think they just really need to focus on their positioning. I'm looking at the defense as well. Proof, he had 11 defense. So it's not like he was just focusing no, yeah. on the spawns. He was helping out the gods inside the hard point. But one of the keys to victory for Team Caliber coming into this game 
winning your respawn game types, and they come out strong here on map one. Yeah, you know, their their downfall of the last few events has been their respawn game types, uh, hardpoint and CTF. More hardpoint, I feel like they're pretty decent. They're pretty good at CTF, but you know that was a strong as strong a performance as I've seen out of them. And I think it, it probably helps a little bit that Stain's a little more aggressive than Gunjar. It probably helps them a little bit more on the hills. We'll see how Team Envious respond in map number two. We're going to stand up for some search and destroy action. And search and destroy Team Cobbler, they're one of the best at it. So we'll see what kind of strategies they have up their sleeves. But we're going to do a quick commercial break. But stay tuned because more Call of Duty action is coming your way.